welcome to the winter series number seven where we will be showing you how we go about trying to catch some cold water carp. We've got some awesome venues lined up for this series and we kickstart this one off at Hilton Valley Fisheries. To the winter series, even though yeah. the viewers haven't seen you too no, much on this. Unfortunately, series. yeah, the last one was um, a bit of a write-off, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so which is unfortunate. We did shoot. We shoot. So we shot one at the boathouse with me and Ollie, and I lost the footage, which I'm gutted about because I caught loads of good ones. You and, sent uh, me the trailer for it. Everything looked mega, and then a week later, I was out walking a dog, and you rang me saying, "I've lost all the footage." Over. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know anything about hard drives? And then, yeah, that was a yeah, yeah nightmare. Story. Yeah. So uh, we won't we won't talk about that because it's still uh, into this day that one. But we're starting this one off at Hilton Valley Fisheries. Um, what's your first impressions of the place? It's a cool little place, isn't it? The mm. first thing that strikes me is how intimate it is. Yeah, it's a it's very small very pond. small pond. Yeah. Um, which I think is going to be hard. It's going to be yeah. hard work, isn't it? I you think know? those smaller waters tend to be a lot harder, don't yeah, they? Like yeah, a lot, fish are a lot more cagey. They're a lot more aware of pressure. Yeah. So, although we've seen quite a lot of activity, haven't we? Sort yeah, of down this have. end. But yeah. So there's been, there's been a load of anglers on, on the pond this weekend, only one of which has caught. And it was quite obvious where, you know, that fish had come from almost the minute I stepped foot onto the lake because in between two islands out there, there's a lot of fish fizzing, isn't there? We've been watching oh, them all that. morning out here. So the anglers have only just left and it's just gone midday now and they're still out there, isn't they? Yeah, so there's clearly a good number of fish out yeah. there, isn't there? So yeah. There's actually 53 fish in this lake and quite a few of them are 30 pounds. Is it 10 fish? Am yeah, I, there's am some, I, right I think they said about 10, 10 or 12. Yeah, like so there's a few 30 pounders in here, loads of lovely 20 pounders in here, really, really scaly as well. So I think if we could get a bite each, we're winning. Yeah, I think we both sort of agree there, didn't we? One bite each, I think that's good yeah, going on here. Yeah, it's fishing tough lately. There's not loads coming out. No. Um, well, I'd like to say the whole lake was full up, wasn't it? And only yeah. one angler caught. Exactly, yeah. And now everyone's gone. Uh, someone's going to be fishing just down in the bottom corner there, but we've got the rest of the pond that we can fish with. I'm not too sure whether that's going to be a good thing or not. That's the thing, isn't it? The second you put a lead in or anything like that, they could all just move right. up the other end. Yeah. Yeah, so it might yeah. be a little bit of chasing, I think. So, yeah. so we're going to start off um, where these fish are at the moment. Like I say, we've seen them fizzing out there. They're still fizzing out there at the moment. And me and Ollie are going to fish to them. We're going to have one rod each out in the zone where them fish are at the minute. Um, we're starting to see them dotting about here, there and everywhere around the lake as well, aren't we? So yeah it could be a case of maybe just baiting a few edges sort of thing and just keeping an eye on things so it's a very shallow lake this it's only about three and a half foot deep so majority of the times if you're going to see fish feeding it's going to be quite obvious them clouding up and what yeah, have you we've yeah, already yeah. seen it down this end as well haven't we yeah. there's there's a little inlet pipe that comes from another lake next door and there's been well, Mozer actually noticed it when he went back to the van that he saw a little bit of bubbling coming up. So while he was back at the van, I'd sort of been mooching up and down and I'd seen about half a dozen clouds and stuff coming up. So yeah. I think when the fish are there feeding, it's going to be quite apparent where they are. So yeah. it's going to be easy enough to get on a minute, yeah, at least definitely. if they move. Yeah, so that's the plan at the moment. So we're both going to fish for these fish out here. It looks very 
baiting poly, doesn't it? You yeah. know, a baiting poly, if that's a word. <laughs> it is <laughs> but now. <laughs> it is now, yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of this is try and keep the disturbance down to a minimum and using the bait in pole is going to be key on a water like this, I feel, and I think you feel the same 100%. as well, don't you? So that is going to be the plan of attack in a moment. So we're going to get set up, obviously go through the rigs, bait and everything that we use throughout the session. But in the meantime, I'm quite eager to get some rods out Definitely. for these fish. Yeah, I want to try and get a rig on them fish before they move. Yeah, so right, let's get to it. Definitely. Cool, right. probably tell the lights now starting to fade pretty quick but I have managed to get the first rod out as we were chatting about earlier there's a inlet pipe that comes from the lake next door and if you stand over it, you can actually see a tiny bit of colored water coming through so there is a little bit of water flow coming in there if you stand over there with the Polaroids you can sort of see like three or four little patches of cloud coming up so I had to get a rod on that I couldn't couldn't really ignore it so all I've done is I've cast a bare ledge straight up to the margin gone down there with a storm pole and just popped that in ready to go in and I've just shipped a little bit of bait out. I've only gone sort of a handful of broken 12 mil bug and a little bit of crayfish maxi mix and a little bit of bug liquid as well. Just a small trap, see if I can nick a bite on it first. The other two I'm going to go out where this sheeting up's been sort of happening all day. Uh, probably going to have one shorter because we have actually about five minutes ago just seen one short, only sort of four or five rod links out maybe. It's going to get one rod on there, one rod out in the silt out in the middle and I think that's me done for the night. Okay, so I'm just getting the rods sorted out now. As of always with this time of year, we're racing against the light. And I think the approach that I'm gonna go in with is a couple of Ronnies on two of the rods with only 12 mil hook baits. One's gonna be a PB, one's gonna be a bug, bug white one. No, sorry, milky malt white one. Normally using the bug, decided to use the milky malt this time. And and yeah, over the top of it, I'm going to use a baiting pole and just put sort of like a load of bug crumb out there, basically. I've got a mix that I made, I would say, about three weeks ago of a load of bug liquid in the bucket to start off with, liquid food. Chucked a load of boilies in there, sort of 12 millers, 8 millers, all the different sizes, 15s, and then crushed up a load of 18s. So there's a bit of a mental mix going on in there, but... You know, that bug bug bait for this time of year, for winter, is perfect. It did, you know, it did well for me last year. So, you know, it's a perfect winter bait and using a spod mix like that, just perfect over the top of these rigs sort of things. So normally I'd obviously fish bug hook baits over the top, but this time I feel like because it's a little bit colder, I think them sort of brighter ones and a little bit more pungent, especially with the PB, because I've had them soaking with a little PB booster, something I always do for my winter hook baits. And that's actually lying on the deck, so it's not actually sat up like a Ronnie normally would, which is obviously sat up like so. It's sort of clawed over like that and sits like that perfectly. Sometimes it lies on the side, quite happy with that. And sometimes it just sits with the hook just clawed over. And that's because I've obviously added that liquid to them hook baits. But with the Milky Malt one, 
that will sit up proud. So that is the plan of attack at the moment. And uh, like I say, we're racing to get the rods out before it gets dark, so I better get on with it. Oh well, good morning. We've just had our breakfast delivery, which wow, looks that, epic. Though. Look at that thing. That looks the one. So what we got? We got bacon, sausage, and hash brown delivered to the swim. So uh, I think we might have to come here. A little bit more often, don't you? We're coming back next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at that, absolutely lovely. So, yeah, unfortunately we lost the light rapidly last night, as like I say, it's always the case with winter. And as the night went on, the fish sort of pushed right slightly, didn't they? They started did, yeah. showing sort of to my right hand side. And then more, you sort of, within the hours of darkness, they sort of started coming back this way, didn't they? Yeah, it was sort of by sort of, 11 o'clock-ish, wasn't it? Then they started really showing down mm. here, sort of in between you and me. Yeah. And there was one about three o'clock this morning. I mean, I yeah. shot up, it sounded like it was coming out in the bivvy. <laughs> it was ridiculous, absolute donkey, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, there is, um, yeah, it, 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 well, I think where it's so intimate, you know, and you get them shows in here, it just echoes around the valley, doesn't it? And it, like you say, it sounds like they were actually inside your bivvy, which is mad. Now the bubbling's just started up again, isn't it? Just in between us out on that zone there. And I think we've had a fish show on every rod now, haven't we? Yeah. So we're definitely in the zone. Mm -hmm. And like I say, that, that was this morning, you know, a fish has shown on every single one of our rods this morning. So it says to us, obviously, we're still in the right area. And I think us not casting has kept them sort of in. Oh, definitely. Way. I think a, a lake of this size, I think the second a lead crashes in, yeah. they're off up the other yeah. end, especially with no other anglers on. Mm. Um, yeah, other than obviously that matey that's in the corner, I don't think it's had anything. I, no, and I don't even think he's cast either. Look, there's another little bit of bubbling yeah, down here yeah. near you. I think obviously with that, even though I think that little bit of disturbance maybe pushed him that way with a pole, but because yeah. we weren't casting about, yeah, I think they were happy to come back sort of thing. So it's definitely an edge having that pole and getting that out into the pond. Uh, we had a lovely bit of food as well last night, Jeez, didn't we? Jesus, the size of that wrap, man. <laughs> we had a monster wrap last night, which was very, very nice. What was it? Four tortilla wraps yeah. with chicken, chips, hash browns, mayo, lettuce, bacon, um, lose count salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you definitely get fed well here, which is awesome, absolutely awesome. But we're hoping that the fish are going to be feeding well today. It feels mega for it, it does. You know, the conditions are perfect, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. For this time of year. The activity and we're seeing as well is that like they've, they've still got to be feeding, like yeah. feeding hard. It's just whether they're going to sort of feed on Slip our bait up. rather yeah. than naturals. Yeah, yeah, indeed. There's a nice so. bit of clouding up in that little inlet pipe as well. I had a little mooch down there early this morning. Mm. And just to the left of where I dropped the rig, there was a real cloud, but it was really close in, almost like the bank's undercut. Yeah. So I'm worried I may be a little bit further out, so I'm, I might change that in a little while, but yeah, I'm gonna leave yeah. it a couple more hours. Yeah, we're still well in the sort of morning bite time zone at the moment, so yeah. fingers crossed, something's gonna happen at some point this morning. Like I say, it feels good for it. The fish are here, no reason why not. No, So. no, definitely, mate. Right, let's tuck into our food and uh, do it. Sit back and hopefully get a bite. Yeah. Got some of my sausage. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, oh, I can't eat it like that, can I? I'll have to, I'll have to come back to that when the cameras are off. <laughs>
Okay, well the morning has drifted away now, that sort of morning bite time. It's, it's half 10 in the morning and yeah, these fizzers aren't as productive as they, as they were yesterday. They just don't seem to have been congregating out in that silty area as much. Now, one of the things I noticed when we got here yesterday is that I saw a fish sort of drift probably about half a rod length off of the island and underneath a tree, which is almost one of the only overhangs that this lake's got. And I feel like that's probably a patrol route for the carp going around that island. So I'm gonna move off of where them fizzers were and actually put the rod underneath that tree. Unless you've got a baiting pole, you're not gonna be able to cast underneath there. So that's my thoughts on that one. I'm gonna change that one. I'm gonna refresh the other two rods as well. The one that's just out in front here, just on the back of that little gravel seam that I found with the lead-in rod yesterday, as a patch of fizzers has just come up on that rod as we speak, so I might leave that one for a little bit longer now. My other rod is down here, so as you see over my shoulder, you've got a gap in between sort of the island and the bank, and they, just on dusk yesterday, I had the rod in my hand, sort of contemplated putting it down here, but a fish showed up there, and I'm glad I put it up there really, because three or four more fish showed over the top of it. So. That may be a bit of a night zone, who knows, but it's very quiet obviously down there because we're not all trundering, trundering round on the bank, if that's a word. Um, so I feel like having that rod down at that distance is probably a good bet. So I'm gonna stick with them two. I'm gonna change the rig on this rod though. At the moment, I've got it hard on the deck, obviously where them fizzers were out there. And I'm actually gonna put a Ronnie rig and I'm moving over from the 12 mils so I'm actually going to move that up to a 15 miller and a Ronnie rig and the reasons being is because there's obviously going to be a fair bit of leaf matter that's dropped off of that tree and no doubt sitting underneath it off of that overhang so having a rig that's hard on the deck isn't ideal really you're going to want something popped up off the bottom so that it can't get snarled up in the leaves that will be under there and yeah, that's the plan of attack. Change that left hand rod, keep the other two in the same position. I'm probably gonna swap them 12 millers over as well for something a little bit bigger like this and a bit brighter. One on a PB, another one maybe on a bug white hook bait and just, you know, bit of bug over the top of it. So that's the plan at the moment. Get this rod in, get it shipped out underneath that tree and hopefully get a daytime bite. I'm in. Well, I was just on the phone to my missus, having a bit of a catch up, saying, oh, so, you know, we're struggling a little bit, seeing a little bit of sheeting up. And I've just had to, just had to throw my phone on the floor because the right hand rod that I actually redid only about an hour ago, that's just, Bobbin's just cracked the blank and it's melted. So, uh, yeah, things are looking on the up. We're watching them bubbling up all morning sort of thinking, why aren't we getting a bite? Why aren't we getting a bite? And, uh, ooh, it's starting to come good. He's just gone under my middle rod there, so. We were seeing them bubbling up a little bit closer than where me and Moz originally sort of put our rods sort of in that silt gully out there. And I couldn't ignore it anymore. We sort of sat it out for a couple more hours in the morning and we had our breakfast and, um, I thought, I can't ignore it, they're just like a couple of rod lengths shorter. So I pulled in my right-hander, which was only sort of down close in here, and um, just pushed out that little bit further. But 
just sort of another rod length shorter than the middle rod and I was getting liners on the middle rod so I knew they were sort of between the two spots. He's pretty close now. Only trouble is I've got that washing line on my left hander so I'm going to have to try and bring him. There we go, a bit of risky biz. Oh, I don't like doing this. There we go. I'm just going to step over here, grab the old net. Sorry, mate. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, he'll do. He'll do. I'm just going to step down here and get that net sunk a little bit. Oh, he's racing. So, I'd actually, oh, do you know what, I can't actually remember which one this is. I've basically gone in with three different rigs and three different hook baits. When it's a new venue, I never want to just go in with the same rig and like, you know, be like a one trick pony because something might fail or, you know, the presentation might not be right for a certain spot. So, I've gone in with different colours again, murky water don't really like going with dark hook baits, so I've got three bright colours on. And I can't remember whether this was on a pink, a white, or a yellow. But whichever one it is, I'll be swapping another one over to it, that's for sure. So I've got a couple of combi rigs out. And the other one is on more of a coated braid hook link. And I think this might be that coated braid. Um, hooking arrangements are fairly similar, but the material just means it just presents itself that little bit more different. Than the other two but these are wafters so um, Moz has obviously changed his rig over to a pop-up so it'll be interesting to see what happens with his but I went straight in with the wafters and it's if this one goes in the net it's certainly paid off come on mate God, he's fighting isn't he Trying to keep an eye on our washing line as well, just to not cause any issues with that one. Jesus Christ, man, come on. It's not taking any lines, just whizzing around in circles. Come on, up you come. Oh, he's almost going to swim into the net there. But yeah, the, um, the baiting arrangement's sort of very similar to Mozza's really. We, we haven't gone in heavy with a bait. I don't think this is the sort of venue on smaller venues. I think spotting is a bit of a, it's a very risky thing to do on a venue like this. It could, it could pay off, but it could just as much absolutely kill it. And with wanting to keep the disturbance to a minimum and just shipping a baiting spoon out it's just enough for a bite and then at least when you get the bite you can just start again it doesn't matter if you pull off a, an area because you've not baited an area so it doesn't matter if you want to move a rod or anything like that you're not committing yourself you can just fish for a bite at a time he will definitely do he's not bad come on in you go that's on the pink that would do nicely first one in the bag Tell you what, I think he's a 20 pounder. Oh yeah, that's 20 pound. He's a lovely one, that is. Right, I'm gonna get this secure, get that rod collapsed down, and we'll get around and show you.
well I'm very happy indeed with that start just over 23 pound and Darren the owner's just told me it's a fish called single scale and I think it was stocked in about nine pound I believe something like that so very healthy growth rate for this one this was on a bug half tone wafter and pellet only in this mix as well I actually took the boilie out just to change things up a little bit as I mentioned earlier I've sort of gone in with three different tactics if you like this is on a sort of soft coated braided hook link um, so we'll take a little look at that in a bit finer detail once we get this one back so we get a few photos enjoy the moment it's my first car for the DNA cameras as well so it's a bit of a special one for me and yeah lovely times happy days Well, I'm just about to get my rod sorted, ready to put back out. So I thought now is as good as time as any to show you the rig that I just caught that 23 pounder on. Um, again, I did mention that I went through two different presentations um, and three different hook baits. So this one was caught on a bug half tone wafter. Um, it's actually a very simple rig to tie. I don't really like things that are too complicated or anything like that. I like something that I could tie quickly if a hook burrs over or anything like that. So I don't like to mess around too much. So. It's just a very soft coated braid um, coming down. It's, it's almost like a blowback style rig. Um, little rig ring there on a curved shank hook. I quite like small hook baits and big hooks. I think definitely increases the hooking potential of the rig as well um, with that kind of thing. And with these bug half tones, like a size four hook just tends to lay flat absolutely perfectly, just how I want it to. And I'd, if I grab my baiting needle a sec, what would tend to happen would be with that sort of size hook, the hook lays exactly flat on the deck and then your, waft, your wafter's just sort of sitting just over it, sort of concealing the hook if you like. So you can actually get away with quite a big hook doing it that way. Slight little, uh, just a small kicker on there. Shrink tube does do the same thing, but again, simplicity for me, kickers are absolutely fine. If I've got the time, I probably would use a bit of shrink tube, but these kickers are absolutely perfect and do the job just fine. And as I mentioned, just a nice soft coated braided hook link. Now the spot out there is actually quite silty. I went round the margin down the left hand side where I've got that washing line rod and it's really firm clay. I just had a lead in rod, just a little one ounce lead just plopping it about. And in the edges it's really hard clay. Um, but out there you can feel, really feel the lead plug in as, as you lower it down and I'm using four ounce leads. So I wanted something that's a bit softer and a little bit longer in length than I'd normally use as well. Just to ensure that that's sort of laying down nice and flat but still sort of presented just how I like it to be. Um, and I can still get away with a heavier lead doing it that way if you just lengthen the rig. It's not, it's not plugging in too deep. You know, you're not really having to heave the thing out of there when you're reeling it in. Um, but it just ensures that that's just sit, sitting exactly how I like it to. If I show you the other rig that I was doing, which was here somewhere, there it is. It is very, very similar in terms of a blowback style. Um, but this is what's known as combi rig. Uh, I think it's quite popular in sort of recent months with a number of different anglers. And there's probably a number of different reasons for that. So with the two different se sections of material, although you're, you've still got that supple section there and, and sort of the hooking arrangement of this rig is very similar to the other one, with that bit of fluorocarbon there, it just kicks away and lays like sort of perfectly flat every time, um, even with a little bit of rig foam or you know a little PVA bag on there, it's always kicking away it's still laying in the same position as it as it usually would um, but it's a lot more versatile with this so I can fish it on the deck hard like that I can fish it as a pop-up which would just sit up like so if I want to change the hook bait there and I would use this over a much cleaner bottom so where there's that hard clay down at margin this rig lends itself perfectly to that area so what I need to do now is now I've had a bite on that pink hook bait I actually want to change all my hook baits over to that now. I don't want to waste any time. I want to make sure that if they're getting a bite on a pink, if pink's the colour at the moment, I want to switch everything over to that. The margin rod over there, I can do it with minimal disturbance. I can literally creep round, just lift the rig out by hand, change the rig, change the hook bait, lower it straight back in place again. Um, and that middle rod of mine, I think I need to redo anyway because the lead may have dragged when I was playing that fish and faffing around trying to get the lead round there. So. Onwards these go, I'm going to swatch the hook, still going to swatch, switch the hook baits over, and then I think we'll see how we get on. Uh, quite apparent that these fish have moved out now. Ever since I've had that bite, I haven't seen one bit of bubbling in this area. So 
I might even go for a little wander just before I put these rigs back out, just to see if there's an opportunity in the edges somewhere, or maybe the other side of this island, because I do feel like they, they've probably moved away and, and spooked off a little bit. So yeah, we'll have a little mooch, have a bit of a rethink. I'm gonna have a celebratory cup of coffee. Cup of coffee? Cup of coffee. And um, I think we'll go from there. So uh, fingers crossed we can get Mozzera bite as well. bit of an unproductive day for me today unfortunately and after Ollie had that fish earlier on the fish had shifted right in front of me and sort of in between the two islands that are out here and they were fizzing up and going mad out there and I just couldn't sit on my hands any longer so I've sort of been ringing the changes a little bit today and what I ended up doing was messing it up basically now that i know because at the time i thought right i'll put little ounce leads on and i've whacked it past way past where the fizzers were showing and then reeled it across the surface and then sort of dumped it down where obviously the bubbling was happening and that ruined it which really surprised me to be honest they were blowing up so much out there i just thought i'd get away with it silly mistake really because sort of the whole trip we've been saying about not casting and and what have you and i've ended up casting i just thought with an ounce lead i'd get away with it but i didn't the minute i did that the fish have moved off and i think they're now slowly drifting left as i've seen another fizzer sort of out where they started at the beginning of the trip so i'm gonna sort of follow suit with what Ollie did and um, he obviously caught his with a pink bug a sort of wafter hook bait and what I'm going to use is a, a switch wafter so basically I've got some switch switch wafters here that I've had soaking for about a year in switch liquid they have so they the buoyancy of obviously adding liquid to a wafter um, makes them pretty much a bottom bait so all I'm going to do is just tip it off there as you can see at the top there with a switch half tone one of the half tones just trim the top of the wafter off trimmed one of the half tones and then that makes it back into a wafter but not only that gives it that little bit of pink on the top there because obviously that's the color that Ollie had hooked his with so that's what I'm going to do with mine switch is such a great winter bait and I know it would work in here so going to get both of them rods I, I ended up casting two of the rods in the end because there was fizzers in front of me just out in front of the swim just behind that gravel seam and they were fizzing in between the two islands so I got two rods in chucked little ounce leads past them like I said reeled down and fizzing stopped and it slowly looks like that they're drifting back left of the swim again so going to get them two rods in get them into the spoons I'm probably not going to put a lot of bait into the spoon. I feel like I've been overdoing it because Ollie only put a tiny bit of bait in his. That's what I'm going to do as well, follow suit with that. So a couple of wafters on the bottom for tonight. Tiny bit of bait around each one of them. Fingers crossed, that's what does us the do. Right, let's get this finished up. Get back out there because as of always with the winter, you don't get a lot of daylight hours. Daylight hours, there's a new one. left hander on the switch that I spoke about earlier has just busted off 
and uh, yeah, we're in. Me and Ollie are just stood out saying, you know, it feels good for it. There he is. Oh, God, he's a lovely one. Go on, go on. Oh, yes, in the net. Nice. <laughs> Might not be the biggest in the world, but he's a lovely one, definitely. And yeah, me and Ollie have just been stood out saying it's mad that we've not really been hearing them show tonight, whereas yesterday they were showing like mad. And uh, yeah, left hander's just busted off. Got a carp in the net. Yes! Lovely one, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, 15, 12, sorted. Wow, look at that gorgeous creature. Absolutely mega. Might not be a monster that swims around in here because there is plenty of monsters that do swim around in here, of course. But what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in looks. He is gorgeous. And so we're told this is a fish that Lee Jackson had stocked into here. And he's put a little bit of weight on since then at 15 pound 12 ounces now and uh yeah what a mega mega creature buzzing to have caught one especially with the amount of fish that have been in front of me as well it's nice to get that bite so uh yeah i'm over the moon with that he is a proper cool one and a very very lovely hilton valley carp nice all right let's get a couple of snaps send him on his way wicked final morning we both had one now haven't we yeah thank god yeah we knew it wasn't going to be easy so um, no. and we both hoped for a bite but now you're the greed set in isn't it you want another we, we're one both, you? yeah the same, when you had that 15 we were both like mm, yeah how about need 30 another one yeah need a giant because there's like we've said before plenty of times there's a few giants in there and they're gorgeous yeah so yeah it would be nice to get one of them definitely we've got We've got the rest of today, although I might have the opportunity to stay another night. We'll see what happens today yet with that, because there's not anglers on until 12 o'clock tomorrow. So the owner has offered for me to do another night. So we'll, we'll see what happens today, because I would really like to get another, another big one, or another bite at the very least, you know, and hopefully it will be a big one. Uh, what's been happening with you this morning then? Well. I shot up out of bed first thing this morning, thinking that that washing line was away. Turns out two ducks just went straight through the line. So uh, I was up nice Seems and early. Like trying to mate at the minute. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's really mental. The script at the moment. No, so yeah. I didn't want to redo that rod because it, it was early. I didn't want to cause too much disturbance. So I just slackened the line off and just reset it. Left it for a couple of hours. And mm. this middle zone where where we've sort of both had our bites hasn't really done a lot this morning, is it? But no. patrolling down that margin again, had a little look. Um, You'd done a lap around the other side, hadn't you? And it was yeah. just, there were plumes everywhere. It was clear there was more than one carp down there. Yeah, right next so we, to the edge as it well. It was, wasn't it? It was literally free right from, from the bank. Yeah, you could yeah. sort of look down and just see them all bow waving and that. So I moved that rod up. It was another rod length or so further than where I'd actually been fishing. So we've redone that, just the same rig back on. I wound it in, walked around there by hand and just lowered it in with a little bit of pellet over the top. Um, and then it was, it was sort of looking quite promising wasn't it yeah, but unfortunately promising. since then it's sort of died a bit of a death so I'm not sure I don't think I got away with that one um, there's still time still got the whole day and that and the sun's coming out now it? and it's just sort of beating on that little alcove that you've got where yeah. that bank cuts away yeah, so it's completely different weather today yeah. from what we've had since we've been here sort of thing it's been quite overcast and mild and 
now it's obviously high pressure. Mm. Uh, the sun's out, but it still still don't feel as warm as it. No, it was when yesterday. when you're in that direct sunlight, it's not so bad. But yeah. with it being only like three and a half, four foot deep everywhere, I'd be quite interested to see how this sort of changes the activity yeah. of the lake. Yeah. Seeing as it seems a lot slower this morning, it'd be nice if when that sun gets up just past these trees here, yeah. see if they actually cool. start moving around yeah. a little bit. One thing we sort of noticed yesterday is obviously you had your bite at midday, sort yeah. of 12 o'clock, which would be the normal changeover time. So that's obviously a bite time period that's on here because most of the anglers would have left at that point. Yeah. So I feel like that that is upon us today as well. It's time now. It's half 11, 11, so we're getting on for that time, aren't we? Yeah, so yeah, bite time is definitely among us at the moment. I've ended up moving my right hand rod to where... I've seen some fizzing in between the sort of two islands out here. Just a single, single switch, if in doubt, get the switch out, all that jazz. You know, I've always got a pot of switch wafters in my bag and they do get me out of jail and they have done for me this trip. I think what I've learned so far is single hook baits is the way forward really. Definitely it? mate, single hook baits are very, very minimal amounts of food, isn't it? We, yeah. We're talking like a pinch of pellet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I actually took the boilie out of the, the pole since since having that bite. Mm. I'd had that bite and pellet only. Yeah. Um, even There's though a I was lot only of putting in there, isn't there? And yeah. We don't feel like that pellet's lasting. No. You know, so prob yeah. Probably by somewhere. yeah by the time the the rig gets picked up, it's probably a single. Yeah. But yeah. So um, that's pretty much the way I'm fishing now, and similar to you, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we've pretty much got three sort of singles out there. I've turned all of mine onto the switch now two with that little topper on the little half tone on top of it and one without just in i feel like they're probably just drifting about and anything that's sort of a single bait there they're they're not seeing it as danger as no such. you're almost trying to mimic the old bait scenario yeah, aren't yeah. you like bait that's just the odd sort of sprigs and sprogs sort of here and there and yeah. everywhere aren't you just yeah, seeing yeah. The, oh, there's one they've forgotten about just thinking they'll just pick it up mm, yeah. Yeah, indeed so fingers crossed Within the next half hour or so, one of these rods might bust off. Although the activity is definitely not, they're not sort of out in that zone where they were fizzing like mad yesterday. Mm. But there is the odd yeah. bubbler that is sort of coming up here, there and everywhere. So, fingers crossed, the next time you see us, it'll be with that rod hoops over. Well, let's hope so, mate. Fingers crossed, let's hope so. Come on the cods. Okay, so just to look at the rig that did me that bite last night in a little bit more detail, this is the setup here. So I've got 18 inches of tube in there, which is the requirement here at Hilton Valley. And also on that, I've just got a lead clip set up with a nice heavy lead. Now the rig itself, that's actually 20 pound illusion fluorocarbon. That is a fairly stiff uh, material and then that's just set up with a loop one end which clips onto a quick change swivel and then in the center there you'll notice that there's a big blob of putty that just obviously helps pin everything down so at the business end there we've got a size 5 curve medium it's quite an aggressive looking hook that but perfect for this rig setup and as you'll notice there's a big d on the back of it that follows sort of the bend of the hook there and I've just got like one of the little mini bait swivels with obviously a switch wafter with that pink topper there. So this rig, you know, I've been what, fishing a lot with this rig this year, caught a lot of fish in the edge with it. And um, yeah, the minute it goes in their mouth, they're done straight away. So it's, you know, these tricky sort of waters, a little bit like this that's here, 
that is a perfect rig for hooking them tricky carp. So that's the setup that's done the do for me and um, let's hope that it does the do for the rest of the trip as well. Right, well, unfortunately, that is it. Session's come to an end. No more fish. No, sadly not. Although it's looking like the lake is coming alive. It's now overcast, as you can see, and it feels like, I think if we were to stay tonight, we'd have had another. Oh, mate, I think we? if we had another couple of hours, I think we'd have a chance, mm, but it's just getting yeah. to that time in it, unfortunately. Yeah, so unfortunately, it's just one of them things. So yeah, we're rushing to beat the light at the minute. We've got to say a massive thank you to Darren and his wife for looking after us here. They fed us well. The food here is absolutely amazing. The fishing is proper cool as well. Have you enjoyed it? Loved it, mate. It's a proper intimate little pond, isn't it? And I think sort of the second it starts maturing as well, it's only going to get better. Yeah, definitely. So I know I'll definitely be back at some point where it's such a shallow lake. It's very good for a winter bite. So. Till next time. Yes, mate. See you later.